What's going on, guys? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking us on out. You're beautiful and I love you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, look, if you like the Tobin and Leroy radio show and all our shenanigans, looking forward to a fun-filled week. Check us on out at the WQAM YouTube page as I will uh, update that uh, daily with uh, multiple clips best of from uh, the day that is from uh, from that. So looking forward to it. Obviously, we've got a celebratory uh, start to the week coming up with your football teams as the Miami Dolphins, again, victorious against the Detroit Lions, looking beautiful. I got to say, dude, uh, first of all, Goosey's Galore Award handout, all right? The Golden Goose, if you will. I may actually even get like a Golden Goose Award just to give out to uh, to each individual. But the Golden Goosey's Award goes to Dan Marino because this photo of him hugging Tua Tungavailoa Goosies. Goosies galore, dude. I mean, the GOAT with just, you know, the 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 franchise QB. Yeah, I said it. And the, the, just the embrace there. Warm, tender. Some may say beautiful. little twinkle in Marino's eye. I've always said, you know, boots on the ground. I've gotten a chance to go to camp. When I see Marino watching Tua, I can always just see. It was just a little something there, dude. A little twinkle in his eye would just uh, let everybody know that kid's all right. And now you're seeing him put up numbers that even Marino hadn't put up. The uh, This was pretty crazy. Tua became the first Dolphins quarterback to put up a 350-yard-plus game, three TDs at an 80% clip. Not even Marino did that. Imagine that. Finally, a, a statistic that Dan Marino did not accomplish a quarterback that didn't suck. So uh, pretty, pretty awesome to see all that. And I got to be honest with you, like the entire post game was a vibe, you know, like it was totes of doors to see Tua asking questions to Jalen Waddle about his touchdown pass. And, you know, and, and, and uh, the, you know, they were just, they were just, you know, joking back and forth with each other, not to be outdone how adorable it was to see the co Waddle between Cheetah and Jalen Waddle doing it together. It was just a beautiful thing, man. I love seeing that. Jalen Waddle saying that he was proud of Tua Tunga by Lowe for sliding. Who doesn't love this stuff, man? And I don't know. They just seem like they, uh, the, the team seems in a really good place. When they have number one there, it just seems like it calms everything down. Um, imagine. Imagine having your star quarterback be able to start and finish a game. What it will do. It seems like it does wonder for it, doesn't it, everybody? Pretty wild thing to see. Um, and it was it was a, as delicious as I, th- as I thought it was going to be. Seeing Dan Campbell there up on that podium, a little bit broken, a little bit, a little bit of a piece of man Campbell. I know you know some some people still have his supporters down here. You know, I I, I look at him as a fad. You know, a, a two week run that was cool. You know, it was uh, it was like Pokemon Go. We had our phase, and then it was over. And Dan Campbell in his tight bicep bulging shirt. Just looking a little bit broken. It was tough, as he said. You know, we couldn't stop those receivers or Tua. Now, in fairness to him, he knew it was going to be dangerous going into the week. So I will give uh, Dan Campbell. He knew this was going to be something. Um, but look, that's the, the difference between doing up downs and just keeping your chin up. And that's what Mike McDaniel does. Because he, did you hear what he said about Braylon Sanders? Because he was like, Braylon Sanders had this awful turnover to start the game. Everybody hates him, right? And you're down, you're, you're, you're about to be down 14 nothing. Imagine this, NFL debut, try and make a move, you fumble, team comes right down and scores on you, it's your fault. You know, we all seen the look that Jalen Waddle had when he, uh, when he blew the game he did against the Vikings. Braylon Sanders, NFL debut, he has no goodwill with the Dolphins, at least. See, when, when Jalen Waddle did it, everybody felt bad about me being mad at Jalen. Uh, everybody felt every Dolphin kind of felt like, I don't want to be mad at Jalen Waddle. I love Jalen Waddle. Braylon Sanders. This is your, this is your opening act. Your opening act is not breaking rookie receiving records. It's, it's uh Hey, you're going to fumble and, and put your team in a two touchdown hole. So Mike McDaniel said like, look, sometimes the best thing to say is to say nothing. And that just hit me right here. Cause I was like, wow, He's like, I knew that he already felt bad. Because sometimes, you know, you'll see these jackasses like Nick Saban really ream a kid out on the sidelines in college. Just like, ah, oh, dress him down. Like, he doesn't know. Like, he doesn't know how bad he feels. We all saw when Jalen Waddle had the fumble. How bad did he feel? 
So I just thought that was a beautiful thing from Mike McDaniel, which just continues to show what this this guy is. This man is a true football guru, not a fake like the like like some of these people that like to parade around there as uh, as quote unquote gurus. This man is a true guru. All right. First of all, he's gotten out here and he's just shown giant grapefruits left and right. All right. The, you, you could have a juicer for him. You could you could juice th- those grapefruits and there's still be plenty to make another carton. Like that's what he's got going on there. All right. He knows how to utilize his weapons to the fullest. And you know, you'd think that's like a crazy thing to say, but like imagine having these two race cars and not having the track to make them go fast. You know, a lot of guys don't know what to do with this type of weaponry. You you, you go all over the league and guys are you confused, like why doesn't this guy have the fantasy numbers? Why doesn't this guy do it? And you look at the clip that to, that uh, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle are putting up, uh, it's record breaking. The they broke the wide receiver dual record through eight games, nearly seventeen hundred yards, sixteen hundred and eighty eight yards as a tandem together. That's what this guy. He's like, look, we knew this coming in when he had Waddle. He loved the guy. So like, you got him in fantasy, play him. Then he gets Tyree Kill. And it's like you have Jalen Waddle, but almost like on like speed steroids. I don't I want to be, you know, careful with my term there, but you know what I mean. And you would think, ah, one guy's gonna get lost in the shuffle. One guy's gonna get usually when you have like these two studs, you know, you 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 hone in on one guy, one guy's gonna be covered, one guy's not gonna get the numbers. These guys always get the numbers. And how do you not credit the coach and the quarterback, of course, but how do you not credit the coach with being able to utilize where the holes are in these defenses, which is seemingly everywhere because the separation numbers are out of the, uh, you know, out of the stratosphere because nobody can cover them. They're too fast. And I just think it's, it's, it's huge from him. He's proven that the guys he trusts that he's brought in have been viable. Raheem Mostert. Alec Ingold blocking like a monster, battering Ram for his rushing touchdown today. Trent Sherfield should have had a touchdown today. Tua was even talking about this after the game. He goes, I don't even want to do that Trent Sherfield play. I didn't believe in it, but Mike McDaniel insisted. What do you know? Should have been six for old Trent Sherfield. Mike McDaniel's guy. He trusts his guy. He brings him in. And even the guy, you know what I'll say this? Even the guys who aren't his guys, like Mike Gusecki, right? Not his guy. You know, comes in here. He's got you know, dreams of George Kittle. What what George Kittle would bring to the table? Mike Mike is second, and not a, not exactly smooth sailing to start. Didn't matter. He's still getting him involved now, isn't he? How many of these awful gritties are we going to see every single week? Because he has not forgotten Mike Kosecki. He just needed time to figure out how to utilize Mike Kosecki. So all of these things have just shown you this guy seemingly is a great leader of an organization. I, I, you know, I had the feeling, we all had the vibe, right? We we heard how his players talked about him. We heard how Tyreek Hill described his cojones. We heard all these things. But you really don't know, especially in the face of adversity. That's really where it comes down to. And this man had all of the, the, the football world singing his praises, 3-0 and start. But then the losses pile up, three straight. You have your quarterback who starts the game, a different quarterback ends it three straight weeks, okay? Not only that, you got to start going and, and dissecting neuroscience because everybody thinks that you have some grand cover-up that's going on with your with your, with your your quarterback, okay? So that you're doing something, you know, quite evil, that you, that, you, that you covered something up so that Tua could go out there and play football. So not only do you have to worry about the football, but then you have to worry about all these health questions that you probably have no idea of and are just trying to do your best all you just want to get across is, hey, I kind of care about these guys. That's a lot of stress. So he, he he weathered the storm of a losing streak, injuries, firestorm, people pissed at him, people that have no 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 care or or following of the Miami Dolphins targeting him. And I feel like he handled all that stuff with uh with with just with grace and with great leadership. And not only that, now last week. First time, people really questioning his decision-making. Are his balls too big? He's going out here and he's 
willy-nilly not taking the points because he wants to go out there and, and make big plays. And maybe even his call was right. It was just executed poorly by, by Chase Edmonds. So all in all, I've just been very, very impressed with the man. Very, very impressed with what Mike McDaniel is bringing to the table every single week. And, you know, I, it, was, it was great today because he was really pleased that somebody asked about adversity. What is his creed? Adversity is an opportunity. And they took this opportunity of adversity, this deficit that they faced, and they rose to the occasion to get themselves in a position to get a big road win against a team that stinks, okay? A team that stinks, but a team that stinks can't stop anybody. How many times do we see teams go out there and, f- and, and poop the bed? Poop the bed and lose a game they shouldn't have lost, especially if that team gets off to a fast start. They took that adversity. They use it as an opportunity. They dealt with it. And then when Mike McDaniel also told the defense, hey, effing fix this, they fixed it. They got themselves a W. Very impressive by Mike McDaniel. A true, a true football guru. He's proven it. 